Good morning, Shatters. Good morning. Let's talk about a little bit about change in our lives. And um one thing in life, you know, all of us can say we have experienced is changes. And I think we can express change as anything different than what we knew. When you were a baby, you born at your mother belly. <laughs> you come out, you can't eat regular food. You gotta drink milk. After a while, milk isn't enough anymore for you. You start to want a little bit of the food on the plate that your mama got or your daddy got. And as you grow up and you get older, you start getting your own plate. You know, anybody have kids, you know, after a while they have their little own little plate, their own little cup, their own little, you know. And they grow up, you start teaching your kids how to cook. So after a while, you know, they're cooking their own little eggs and you're making your own little breakfast food. And they grow up and then maybe now at this point, they, they're out of the house and they're now venturing off in the work world and they, you know, are learning how to live independently and they're learning how to... You know, so change is always constant for everybody. Change will never stop. First of all, we're getting old. So we don't know at any point when your foot are going to start hurt you. You don't know at any point when your back going to start hurt you. You don't know at any point when your teeth going to start hurting you. But what you do know is if your teeth, your foot, your back ain't hurting right now, if it starts to hurt... You're going to look at somebody like your doctor, your husband, your wife, and you say, ah, something changed in my back. You're going to say, something, something changed in my teeth. My teeth is hurting. I got to get to the dentist, right? So change is always a constant for every one of us. No matter if you're rich, no matter if you're poor, no matter if you're black, no matter if you're white. But in this life, any change that is going to endure can only happen through God. I think, you know, when we look at our lives in this world, we're living in a humanistic world, physical world. When we think about humans, we think about physical. Because humans, they can die. You and I can die. You know, we can get sick. We can pass away. We only have one life to live. So we cannot plan necessarily for tomorrow, even though we do plan a lot of times. We still cannot necessarily plan for tomorrow because I could be driving on the street in the afternoon and that is the end of my life, right? So changing this world can be physical. But when it comes to change that will be permanent for life, it's only God that can bring it. You know why a lot of people wish to change? A lot of us sometimes you look in your life and, and it's a personal examination. When you look in your life, you say, all right, I want to change this thing over here. I want to stop eating sweets at night, for example. I want to stop um, going out to the club because I'm tired of going out to the club and spending my money, right? Or you say, you know what? I want to stop dating dating all these crazy men or, or these crazy women. Or you, you want to stop doing something in your life. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? You want to continue and you want to stop doing certain things in your life. Everybody that's coming in, bless, blessings to you. Good morning. We're talking about change. But even though there are some things in this physical world that we God give with the authority to do. For example, you're not going to say, God, I'm going to pray that you bring me a cup of coffee. Let a cup of coffee come over here to me, Jesus. Send a cup of coffee because I know you're a miracle worker. Cup of coffee, come now in the name of Jesus. No. Because the thing is this, in this physical world, it gives us the ability to physically change some things. I can physically get the cup of coffee. Go take it out the kitchen and put it on the table right here. Physically, I have that authority. I have the strength and the ability. So you see, if you have the strength and the ability to change something, don't beg God to change it. All right. 
So now we can talk a little bit about what do we actually have the ability to actually change? <laughs> you know, you know, what are some of the things me and you can change? Because they last me check. I like what I like and I don't like change, right? So let, let's think about some of the things that we think we need to change in our life. No, to the point of physical things, if we can do it and we have the strength and the authority to do it, God doesn't have to give you strength to move the coffee cup from this point to this point. He doesn't have to. You have already been given authority in that. But the change that many people seek is deeper than the physical. And I believe it is definitely deeper than the physical because God gave us a piece of himself. The Bible talk about him making us in the likeness of his own image. You know, when you think about God, you're not God, first of all. But he makes you with a little, you know, bit of things and characteristics of himself. He puts a little bit of his sauce in you, right? So you find yourself wanting and desiring certain things and you're wondering why. You know, when you're stuck in a position, you're like, I want to change, I want to get out, I don't know why I'm stuck here, but I just want to get out, I want change. But that change is deeper that you seek. And I believe that change we all seek is something that God puts in each and every one of us. Whether you are a believer, whether you are a churchgoer or not. Because he put a little bit of himself in you, you're always having a desire to change things that are considered not to be right to you. Especially things that you're convicted by. Now a lot of us have heard people say, I'm changing. We have said we're going to change. We're, we're trying to change. And there are some actionary things that go with change. Because you cannot say you want to change. You, um, you want to lose weight. But you're not wait, willing to do the physical activities to change. Alright, so faith without work is truly dead. So don't try to say you're going to change by speech only. But you have to change by action as well. Right? Speech is good. Decoration is good. Speaking those things that are not as though they are. I want to lose weight because I am 600 pounds. So I'm going to speak it in the atmosphere. But I will not only speak in the atmosphere. I will also take the physical work seriously. That means physically, when I go to the store and I buy my grocery, I'm going to stop buying all them Pop-Tarts. And them big old Pop. That got all them grams of sugar up in there. You understand what I'm saying here? The deeper change though... Is the change on the inside that God puts in every one of us. The choice is yours to work on that desire, that deep-seated thing that bothers you. That is why you cannot do things the way they do things. That is why you're troubled when you get caught up. That is why you're never at peace if you do something. Because God put a little bit of himself in you for change. But you cannot change without him. You will never exist to honestly change without God. Why? Because we're sinners. Got a mosquito. We're sinners. By nature, we're like this. Naturally, you and I is like this. What are we going to do? Change ourselves? We're going to get up and all of a sudden we're going to change ourselves? We're going to be a superstar tomorrow? No, because if it was that easy, we would have all been a superstar. So one thing we can do at knowledge is that change is not simple and it's not easy. And also, without the action, you cannot accomplish change by only speech. It sounds good. It sounds nice. But I'm here to encourage you that without the action and the consistency within that action, change will not stay. You see, because we're always dealing with everything in our life, Ah, good morning, Edna. We're dealing with everything in our life. It's so much pressure. You're picking them, your husband, your wife, your, 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 your auntie, your mama, your papa, your grandpa. Uh, God forbid, your cousin. Your pookie dookie, suki, uki, and cookie. Every, every uki. You have to deal with everything in, in your life. So, change always happens for you, right? Mama get old mama in a hospital now. All of a sudden, your mama never hospitalized yet, but no mama in a hospital two weeks. So, we can use all, we can use some examples to say, we don't know necessarily in our personal life. What is going to change? But we do know change will happen. All right. First of all, we have to work on our mentality. We have to work on the way we view things. Change the way you think. 
If you're a negative thinker, you know you are or not. You know that. God knows and you know. Come on, don't you don't have to play fool with me. It's not a place of judgment. It's not a place to bring anybody down. So you can be very much comfortable being honest about it. Change is not going to be simple, but it starts with your mind. If a man thinks in his heart and in his mind about some things, usually he acts it out. So, and if you're grown enough and you're as old as me or older than me, even a little bit younger than me, you and me know so sometimes we think some things and we act upon it. We act upon it. And we know we have pl plans in our head. And we just act upon it. Yes, goody. You understand? We think it. And we will it. And we do it. So, the first step, we have to change the thinking. And so we change the thinking and the way we process, the speech then comes out differently. Because now you no longer process things in this toxic way or this negative way or in a way that isn't good for your change that you desire on the inside. You're processing it different. So now the action that you do towards it will be different. It won't be for attention. It won't be to be seen. What it will be for now is a personal. It's a personal. So if no one acknowledges it, if no one says to you, honey, I see that you changed so much. If nobody comes to you and says, oh my God, I love that you changed. You will not feel any kind of way because the change you made was personal. It was personal to you. There are some things we are dealing with on the inside that we cannot tell people. You can literally only tell God. Some of you, you tell your husband, your wife, everything. However, and some of you are best friends with your daughters. You tell your daughter everything. Your daughter tell her everything. But this one thing has troubled your spirit. This one thing has troubled your mind. And you want a change for that thing. You want a change. But every time you think about getting through this thing. Getting over this thing. The mentality you have. The way you process it. You cannot overcome that thing. So what I will encourage you this morning to tell you. None of we can change. Any day in life. No matter how good you are. Some people only change to show off. It's not real change. No matter if they're consistent in it. Some people only do it with, a rock, with the motive to be seen of others. But change. Real change persists and continue. Even in the dark. When no one is there in your house with you at night. When you're crying and you understand your condition. Or whatever condition you're dealing with in the heart. Whatever issue you're dealing with in your personal life. Changing our mentality will change the way we speak and it will help us with the action to be changed. Some of us, we, 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 we cry change every day, but we're not taking any necessary action to do so. That's why I preach on my channel. Sometimes if you know you're wrong, people, don't be afraid to let your supporters see who you are. Good morning, Miss Navi. Don't let your supporters be afraid to see the change in you and the verbalizing of that change and the action, everything of that change. Supporters are not stupid. If you speak of change, they're waiting to see it. And I don't care. Some of them will come around and try to, you know, mess with you and piss you off so you can act out. And so they can look at you and say, see there, see there, you never change. But guess what? When you are changing, it starts in the mind. So if you're not truly changing the mind, when they open their mouth and they speak to you and say, look at you, you're a dog, you're not change. It's not going to impact you the way it do now. Because a lot of people are emotionally driven. You're not really driven materially. You're, Im Im you're emotionally driven. So as soon as somebody say, see there, your becks. See there, in top ball. See there, you start cuss. No. People should not be able to impact your change because your change will be contingent upon God. It will not be contingent upon show off numbers and money. When we say change, we got to come into a genuine spot. You can't, you got to separate yourself into a place of genuinity. People are not stupid. They can see whether we are really trying. They can see your consistency. They can see, you know, your reputation and how you move. So, and, and I was saying this on my life too. I said, you know, we do create an atmosphere for ourselves, you know, with everything that happened, you know, the viewers, the fans, the supporters, people who donate to things and respect others. They do watch and they see how people carry themselves and those, it affects the way they view us. So don't think for one second that you don't care about the way people view you in some regard. No, you don't have to care about what everybody's opinion is because guess what? Opinions are like farts. We all let them out. They loose like goose. Let them let the wind take them. But let me tell you, how you present yourself should matter. And if I am presenting myself in a manner in which is not good, I should within my heart feel a sense and a desire for change.
All right. Nothing is wrong with um, expression. But the, me coming out here and expressing myself doesn't mean I have to tear you down. So we have to be consistent in the action of change. And will you be perfect? No, we won't. We will not be perfect because we are all human. But people that are constantly and consistently working towards perfection, meaning maturity, you will eventually experience change within those people's language and in the things that they do actionary. Let me tell you something. A lot of us out here knows we need to change. But we get numbers off being toxic. You know you need to stop certain things. You know the way you deal with people is wrong. And you know in your heart because you're not at peace even though you pretend to be on those lies. Because God has given each and every one of us a piece of himself whether you're saved or unsaved. One thing I know about my Jesus, he's not a respecter of person. My Jesus does not discriminate because you're in a church or no in a church. God made each and every one of us with the ability... And, 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 and certain ability, if mosquitoes are here, certain ability, you can't run. I say, well, God didn't give me that. No, he gave you conviction. He gave you a piece of, him, of himself. He gave you the ability to think on your own and to make that, that right decision. So if you don't choose deliberately to change, you will not accomplish change. And if you don't endure change, you will not truly experience change for the longevity. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot just have said change, change, change. We have to do the actionary things. And does it take time? Yes. Should you give yourself grace to change? Yes. Should you give other people grace to change? Yes. Because God gives us grace every day. I will not condone wrongdoing. No. Wrongdoing is wrongdoing. No matter who do it. But at the end of the day, if a person constantly says they want to change, you should give them grace to change. Because every day I get up, I see that I'm a sinner. And every single God Almighty day, me have to repent. So if God, if God is forgiving me every day, who am I to not look to a brother or a sister who say, Oh, no want to change, you know. Whether they, whether, whether they endure the change for the next two weeks, two months, two years or not. It's my desire only to acknowledge that. Respect that and give them grace. Now, some people deliberately know they don't want to change and they say, I'm not going to change. And that's perfectly fine because guess what? Change is something that you have to make a choice for. You have to see the benefit for it. You have to see the depth of it. A lot of you, you will never change because you all your life you're just so used to the way you move. You're so used to it and it's what's feeding you. A lot of us has given in to negativity. Um, some of us have changed into negative people. You've changed from a positive person to a, such a negative person. And the negative persona does pay you more and you get more clout off of it. So for you, you made a choice that changing for you right now is not a thing, right? So you make that choice and you continue because there's a other, another benefit. But let me, let me let me let me let me enlighten you you may think there's a benefit now but for the long haul there won't be a benefit because some of the damage that you do when you're doing it for so long it's like having a rug at your house that you put dust under every day and dirt and you never pick it up in the dustbin and put it in the bin and one day one day one day oh one day you come from work oh one day one day you're straining off the dumping pot Oh, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, you're walking. I are going to the fridge. Because I need some flour. You see, I throw a little milk in there. Because maybe I want them milky people. They want to need flour with milk. And you see, I'm going to the fridge. Gonna and boop, you lick your foot on the same rug. Where you pile up all of the dirt. And, uh, and things say the dirt. When you just get up and imaginary, just get up and just disappear. No, the, the, the dirt in our life as human beings, with authority that God has given us, the dirt does not just disappear. God did not create the dirt to disappear. And you are not the creator of man. God is. So you see, when he creates us, he creates us with a specific agenda. And when you and I venture out of that agenda, we will do nothing but fall on our face every time. I don't care where you are in the world. You can suck salt. You can kiss your teeth. You can suck your teeth. You can cuss. You can dog me. You can do what you want to do. You will never experience true change without the work. And I tell you something, because some of you is not willing. You're only willing to compromise your soul. You will reap the benefits of it later. Some of you will not be bold enough to admit the damage you have done. Because you're too shame and prideful. That's another thing that needs to change. That spirit of pride over your life. The Bible says, pride come before destruction. 
and any of us, you, me, are the old lady. If we consistently let off our pride, we are not going to get anywhere in this world. When you have done wrong unto people, you ought to open your mouth without pride and, and with humility to say, Brother, I'm wrong you. Sister, I'm wrong you. Because if your heart is pure and clean, that sister and brother will never do nothing but love back and give your love. Shout out to Trend Name. I love that brother. And nobody will change that. Doesn't matter what trending do. Remember guys, we're all making our independent choice out here. And God will repay us for it. God is going to repay you for the word you're speaking to somebody's ear gate. God is going to repay you for people who take up what you have said and run with it and abuse other people. God is going to punish anything come out of my mouth that I don't repent about. And some things you might repent about, but not because you repent about it doesn't mean there's not a repercussion. Guess what? You can commit a crime and you go to prison and God say, yeah, he forgive you because you repent, but you still have to do your time, don't it? We're living in a physical world. Don't be fooled by being unwise. We will always pay the penalty for any action, everything you and I do. We will always pay the price for what we open the pie hole in our mouth to speak. Some of you, you speak over your children's life. That's why they are not anywhere in life. You're an angry mother. You're an abusive father. Some of you in a, is, is an absentee parent. And you don't care to change it. Some of you, you made many mistakes with your children. Some of you, you went and looked for opportunities in America while your children was in Jamaica taking Ella abuse. And even though we understand why, even though enough are we parents do these things, but you still have to admit to that child that you weren't there and you made that choice. And if that child is dealing with some sense of abandonment because you left them being immature, them not understanding the purpose of it, and you not as a mother communicating with love and with grace and giving your child that opportunity to express, tell them to forgive you. Tell your baby girl to forgive you. Because sometimes you don't know what your children have gone through. And it's not everything your children tell you what happened to them. For, and I'm just using an example here. A lot of parents do migrate to look for the opportunity and their kids are abused. I know a lot of people, them people get raped out for, for years by family members. Family members while the mothers and fathers go out to look for opportunity on the farm and to make money to take care of them. But will you be able to change what has been done to your daughter even though you did the right thing to go, you know, and seek opportunity? Will you be able to change what was done to your son? Some of you, your son, don't even share the violations that happen because you're one of the rough father there. Where well, you don't give your son no time, no grace to speak and express themselves. So now they got to shut their mouth and it's all bottled up on the inside. A lot of people you hear running their mouth. They're angry. They got a self-battle. They got a battle on the inside of them. They got a war brewing. That is why they have to come on social media and they have to bring people down like me and you. They have to look out of the eye to bring me down. Because why? They have a battle on the inside of them. They have a battle on the inside. But I come to remind you that you might be battling in this flesh. But let me tell you something. The God we serve, the God we have learned about, the Jesus that died for our sin, he knows how to calm that battle, Miss Gloria. He knows how to calm that storm in your life. And a lot of you, you want to be angry at me. You want to be mad at me. But you've got to be mad at yourself. Be mad at the battle. Don't you see that the devil set you up? I am not your problem. The devil is your problem. He wants to make me your problem. Don't you see here that this Receiver of the brethren, he come to fool you. Don't you see he got you cocked up, blocked up and jacked up like a car when I'm a change tire. And I saw you have you. And you let him do it. Don't you see? Change must come for you. Aren't you tired of being a puppet for him? Aren't you sick and tired of listening to his voice and raging like a bull? On the media, in your personal life, with your relationship with your kids. You ball over every pit you have. You can't have no calm conversation with none of them because you don't know how to communicate because of the battle on the inside of you. I have met many people that is unforgiving, but yet you worship God. Yet you have Holy Ghost and you have unforgiveness in your heart. Let me come to remind you, the children of God, Miss Gloria, does not have a choice. Unforgiveness cannot be the burden you carry because you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me tell you, when they do me dirty and they burn me skin, when they do me friend dirty and they burn me skin, I me want to come and wheel me tongue and lick them and barra, because we are human beings. What? Guess what? 
that won't change anything. So your mentality have to change against people and say, you see this or something, yeah? This is nothing but a setup of the enemy to distract me from where God want me to go. Because to be honest, we talk, the people them don't know me and me don't know them. You know, she say I eat that, and you know, she say I eat that, the Satan, Satan, take over. You know, she say a fool in take over. You know, she say you a fool when you open your mouth and talk about chit chat and I want ill way, you don't know the good girl. For I can't paint. You only see me out upon social media, my big mouth and my dry throat. Eh? You know, she say you a idiot. You know, she say the devil set you up. And you know, she say when you watch me right now, you don't burn your skin because the demons, they might not kick up. The blood of Jesus is against you. You know, see? You don't see the bigger picture. So when you change your mindset and you say to yourself, say, me not know this a girl, yeah? This girl never come against me. And this girl I try to encourage God. She's not doing anything wrong. Is she not perfect? Me not perfect. Then what the problem then? There ain't no problem. You know where the problem come from? The thoughts of Satan put in your head about me. Just like when people go take my videos and try to change my words. You cannot fool me. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood is against you. Satan has set you up. I may come to remind you. He may go set you tomorrow again. Will you be set up by Satan? And if you lack change, my brother, ask of the Father, the one who create the change maker, the one who make change sit down by you like nice clothes. Like when the African them get the cloth them and they put them on and they suck you like a me say when you African them put on the clothes them, you have to say, God, no one married them in Africa no Africa, the way the girl them shit good in the clothes. When you put on upon them, you just sit down so. Me want the change of God. If you sit down so upon me. In every action, everything. From me, yeah, what me watch, what me listen to, what me talk to them, or say, the things I do with my action, if me a thief, if I'm a thief, I'm a robber, them a finger and if you tap teeth people, if me a beat up people, if me a go out and I abuse people with these hands, it need to tap. If me and I use my foot to trample people, it need to tap. And you need to look in yourself and say, guess what? Me should not trample people because the people may trample me not even know them. Good morning, Miss Valerie. How are you, sweetheart? You know, see, say, well, go on, John. Big up your nice skin, sir. You know, see, well, go on. It's a setup from you. So I'm here to remind everybody out there that don't like me. Guess what? It's okay. Satan don't like us. And if you succumb to Satan, you won't like me either. But if you succumb to God and you honor God, will you hate God's child? Because God's child don't hate you. Because all of you were created by him. We all belong to him. We are all his children. So when you fight out me, you fight out God. When me fight out you, me fight out God. So what, what? So so you tell me now, if I'm a madness for you to entertain that negativity, you tell me now, if the Satan is not setting you up against me, and you're not realizing it. Change your mentality. Change the way you view people. The way you view things. And the permanency will remain for the change you have been trying to accomplish. You're going back and forth because you not take it serious. When no one is looking, you should still be on your cue, Miss McBean. When no one is looking, the change you talk about out here or do or in your job, wherever you are in the world, whatever that change is, no one is looking, you're still supposed to be on it because you're not doing it for clout and money. Some of you are pretenders, and I'm begging you, God sees. Don't pretend. He knows the truth. We don't have to pretend. They tell you no mystery already. No matter what it is, just keep it under with God. Because he already know the truth. Don't you see? You cannot hide from God, you know. And that is the fool that we, that is the lie that the devil tell we. The fool we. Because when you don't know that God loves you in spite of anything, you still will never go to him for the change that you require and desire. So you stay in that perpetuated cycle. And then before you know it, it's 20 years of you being bitter. And then you turn around being mad at God at the end. Because guess what? You never submit to him and accomplish your purpose. So now you're mad with God. God didn't do nothing to you. Be mad at yourself that God gave you a will and you choose not to use it. God gave you authority. Yet you choose to sit in the pit where Satan has lodged you. Satan has no authority over you and I.
The Bible says in Colossians 1, in Colossians 2, verse 15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Every price is paid. It's already done. You and I cannot do it. You're not in the shop of doing anything. You're not holy, you're not righteous, neither I am. But the one that has done it is already done. All you have to do is take the robe he has handed for free, the gift he has given for free, and you lay it on yourself and you accept it. That's true, your will of choice. So if you choose to continue to perpetuate in bitterness, stay in your own league with your bitterness. Don't pick on other people thinking that you can get them down because of the mere fact is that that person is stronger than you. Whenever you feel the need to have to bring people down, it shows your character of weakness. Whenever you feel like you have to tear them down, it shows your weakness. Especially a lot of you, you're even in the dark when you do lies. It shows you're weak. It shows that you have a problem visually for us to see you. So I'm sure if you have a problem for me to see you, you have a problem for God to come in and change you as well. That is not my problem. I will never hate you. I will love you with the love of Christ. But whenever you come for me, I will rebuke that demon working in you. Because no demon has authority because the scripture says in Colossians, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. Some of you have made a public spectacle of yourself. You did. I didn't do it. So don't, don't be mad at me. I didn't make your choice. You will not blame me in this season. Blame yourself. Yeah. Triumphing over them. So if you choose God, He consistently made them a spectacle. Don't you look at social media and see that they're all making themselves a spectacle? Did we make them go out there and do those things to people and the woman? Did we have anything to do with it? But they want to blame us. Don't you see this is sick? Don't you see that the enemy is active in their mentality? It's not right. And it is absolutely not true. Make sure this morning you hear this lie that changes for you. And if you don't take the authority over yourself, you have no right to come out here and call anybody's name, blaming anybody for the change that you have not yet acquired. Don't be lazy. Get up off your high horse. Get up off your private, prideful bench. And let change persist now. Let change come along for you because it is necessary. We can see that you're being eaten alive. We can see bitterness and anger taking over your life and we don't want this for you. I don't even want it for myself. And whenever I've seen it in myself, I say, God, change that about me because that's not nice. That's a nasty energy. If I, I can talk it out loud, what more can you do? If I can speak my flowers out loud, Without a problem. What more can you do? Huh? So you let nobody stop what God has begun in you. Chatters, this morning, if you're here and you're not following me, please ensure to follow us at Chicha TV, Hard Talk, Real Talk on YouTube, TikTok, everywhere we go. Remember, share out our videos that we do when we go in shopping, guys, please. Because we we have our back to school project this, 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 this month. All right? We appreciate all of our supporters. Everybody who donates, I get your deposits. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, yes, we do. I need to look. Well, let me look on the phone here. So see if we get the, um, let me see if we could have find the text in the one here. Hold on, chatters. Hold on. I'm off of it to search. That was going in my messages. I got the, um, I got the, I got the Zelle deposit um from one of our supporters here we, we thank you we thank you so much miss wesley i don't know if you want me to know me to know me to know where you want me to call you but me i got message you and ask you you know we have to tell the people them about the donations and all right guys y'all know your money is safe it's always safe no matter what we don't we get all deposits we let people know but we let everybody know that give us a deposit we let them know we get the deposit because we want you to know if y'all get the money you have to know so we get it right through all right, guys, remember, the girl um, is charging us $100 for the balloon thing. She's going to be doing the balloon characters and stuff like that. So it's only $100 for the day. So that's not too bad, you know. I mean, no big deal. You know, you pay the people the money worth and go through. All right? So, guys, please follow us everywhere we go. Please follow us. And I don't want anybody 
pushing negativity please don't follow them just know that changes for them too pour god's love upon people don't let them get into your head please don't let them get into your mind don't make this something get into your heart please let take your chance and filter out anything negative because we all walk around every day and we go through negativity every single day we breathe we sleep we smell we near negativity so what i'm saying is this you have a choice you have a chance and you have an opportunity today to change your thinking so your speech can change and then your actions can no go with it all right, it's your girl Annie, and it is Chit Chat TV because over here we have the Art Talk, Real Talk conversations. All my true and genuine supporters in the back. Big up on the nice clean stuff. We love on so much. All of my true big man. I'm going to say, I'm going to send a call in. Lord God, you're welcome. Big up on the love on the sofa. Lord God, you're welcome. I love on you, know. I just the truth. I just the truth. If you're here, please share the live. Don't let me have to beg on the fish share the live. Then the one that was decent and nice. Please share the live at two. I beg you do. Mm -hmm. Share the live, goody. We could get the views and get the support from more people. Alright? Big up on yourself. Have a blessed day at work today. Keep it positive. Keep it stepping. And keep it moving. Big up on a nice, clean set. I love when you see. Can't bother.